Godspeed. Ahoy, all of you flick freaks out there, what is going on? My name is Andrew, and we are here with another video. We are going to continue on with the ranking of my personal favorite top 100 movies of all time. Today, we're going to be doing numbers 60 through 51. And then after that, ladies and gentlemen, we are on to the top 50 movies of all time. Just as a clarification, what I say at the beginning of every one of these videos, this is not the top 100 most critically acclaimed movies. This is my top personal favorite 100 movies of all time. So if you see a movie on here that you think is either too high, too low, or shouldn't be on here, or you see a movie that is not on the list that you think should be, keep in mind this is my personal list, and it does not reflect everybody else's opinions. Having said that, let's move on to number 60. Coming in at number 60, we have The Love Child and Matt Stone and Trey Parker in their film Team America World Police. I can't remember laughing this hard in a movie theater whenever this movie came out because it was just so perfect. I've always enjoyed everything that they've done. South Park is one of my favorite shows, and The Book of Mormon is beyond hilarious. And this movie in particular, and basketball, of course, this movie in particular really hit my phone because I find political humor to be extremely funny. So it was right there in the wheelhouse for me. And it also has one of the most awkward to watch sex scenes in any movie. The awkwardly long puppet sex scene, which is hilarious. You, I don't understand how some people don't think this is a great movie. All right. Let's move on now to number 59. Coming in at number 59, we have a movie that not a lot of people went out to see, but those who did go out and see it in the theaters knew that it was something special. We're talking about the film Lucky Number Slevin. It stars Josh, or Josh Hartnett, Lucy Liu, Morgan Freeman, Sir Ben Kingsley, and Bruce Willis. It's an all-star studded cast with amazing acting and an incredible story with a twist a lot of people did not see coming. I love this movie just for the fact that you love every single character, villains or heroes. You think everybody on screen is great. They give terrific performances, and it's dark, it's gritty, but on top of that, it's funny. This is a funny action movie. So everybody get on board to watch this movie if you haven't. And let's move on now to number 58. Coming in at number 58, we have one of the most famous comedies of all time. And some people consider it to be the greatest comedy of all time. And if they do, I don't fault them for it because the movie is great. We are, of course, talking about Monty Python and the Holy Grail. When this film first came out, it didn't really get a lot of love. But as time went on, this movie became the cult classic and the standard for comedy. For the fact that it is so unique, you don't see any other comedies in the world that are like, like this. And if somebody tries to recreate this, they just think that it's just a cheap knockoff nobody can touch the original monty python and the holy grail was i can't think of a single movie that hasn't or a single person that hasn't quoted this movie at, at least once the knights that say me uh the death to fight the deadly bunny um <laughs> the coconuts and what is your name? The three questions to cross the bridge. I mean, everything in this movie is something that you can refer to. Just uh, just bring up just quick in a reference and somebody will be like, I see what you did there. You just referenced Monty Python. So with it being one of the most f uh, critically acclaimed comedies of all time and it being one of my personal favorite comedies, there's no way it could not make my personal list. Having said that, it is time now to move on to number 57. Coming in at number 57, we have one of the most depressing movies of all time with The Road. Cormac McCarthy's iconic book, one of my favorite books. This movie, not a single fucking good thing happens to anyone. Whenever you think that there's no way something more awful could happen to these people, something happens. The movie's about a father and son who are trying to survive in this post-apocalyptic world. You never know their names. You just refer to them as the father and the son. And they try and follow this road down south where they think things are going to be warmer because it's going to be winter soon and they need to get where it's warm so that they can survive. As they're trying to journey down south following this road that goes south, they come across cannibals. They come across hunger, starvation, just just every horrible thing you could possibly imagine. So, yes, 
If you're in for a movie that is extraordinarily good, but you don't mind it being extremely depressing, this is the movie. Brilliant writing, brilliant directing by John Hillcock, who we know from Lawless, and he just gave us, um, he's going to be giving us, I should say, he's going to be giving us triple nine. So everybody check out the road. And I say, let's move on to number 56. Coming into number 56, we have Quentin Tarantino's first masterpiece, the 1992 film Reservoir Dogs. The movie set the standard for what Quentin Tarantino was allowed to do. And it's funny because a lot of people say that he has kept that level of greatness with a lot of his films. I personally don't think that the Kill Bill films are all that great. I think they're extremely overrated. But that's besides the point. We're talking about Reservoir Dogs. This movie is brilliant on all levels. You have an undercover cop trying to infiltrate this group of heistmen who are trying to knock over a diamond store. And then what happens whenever he gets shot, he has to keep his identity safe while at the same time trying to stay alive while these madmen are surrounding him. The movie is fantastic. And if you've never seen Reservoir Dogs, it is definitely one you need to check out. And let us move on now to number uh, 55. Coming in at number 55, we have one of Sergio Leone's masterpiece, Spaghetti Westerns, Once Upon a Time in the West. It stars Charles Bronson and Henry Fonda. These two, even though they're playing against each other as protagonist and antagonist, they have great chemistry together. You love the fact that these guys don't like each other that much. And you don't know why until the very end, why they hate each other. And whenever that's revealed, you're like, whoa, did not see that coming. It's brilliant. Sergio Leone, he is a true master that we are all sorely missing because his westerns are some of my favorite movies of all time. Let's move on now to number 54. Coming in at number 54, we have Gavin O'Connor's film Warrior. This stars Tom Hardy, Joel Edgerton, and Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte, I think, steals the show even though he's just a minor character in this. The performance he gives, he definitely deserved the Oscar. He got the Oscar nom. He didn't win, though, but I still think that he should have won that year. This movie is about two brothers who were separated from each other as children, but they finally are reunited. The only problem is they've been reunited within the octagon of a mixed martial arts tournament to fight each other, to find out who will be crowned the best in the world. You see one man who went on to be a great family man who is a teacher and he loves his children, but he does mixed martial arts on the side. And then you have Tom Hardy's character who became this alcoholic ex-Marine who is just bitter at the entire world. So you have one who's this kind of methodical, his fights take a long time, and then you have this street brawler who is just out to, for blood. The movie is brilliant and fascinating, and if you've never seen Warrior, you definitely need to check it out. And now let's move on to number 53. Coming in at number 53, we have Pixar's film WALL-E. I love this movie so much. It's just a great, feel-good movie. You love the characters. You care so much for everybody in this movie, even though like 99% of them are these robots that shouldn't have personalities, but they do. I think they emote so much emotion in this movie and it's great and the other thing is that as an american whenever you see the ending in this movie and you see just the fat lethargic people being wheeled around in hover chairs you're like yeah i could see that being our future so it's a great like ominous like hey we got to get our shit together otherwise this is going to be us with no bone density just fat just rolling around <laughs> but the movie is great just wally his love for eva and just the friends that he meets and creates along the way is just brilliant you love this character so much and that's why it definitely deserves a spot in our top movies of all time having said that it's time to move on now to number 52 you either love it or you hate it. Coming in at number 52, we have Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. One of Edgar Wright's films. We know him from the Cornetto trilogy. And when I say Cornetto trilogy, I'm talking about Hot Fuzz, Shaun of the Dead, and The World's End, which I still think The World's End was really, really funny. A lot of people didn't. But that's besides the point. We're talking about Scott Pilgrim, another one who a lot of people did not like this movie. But if you did like it, you absolutely loved it. And I obviously fell in the absolutely loved it category. Michael Sarah gives 
a hilarious performance in this alongside uh, Kieran Culkin, Macaulay Culkin's brother, who I think he actually was the big takeaway from this movie. Like, I didn't know a lot about him going into this movie, but after I'm like, I got to find other stuff that he's done. Because if he's that funny, he has to have some other stuff out there that is just brilliant. The movie is about a young man who finds the woman of his dreams. The only problem is, in order to be with her, he must defeat her evil exes. And it is freaking hilarious the way that it just goes all around the bend. It turns into this 8-bit video game montage of just hilarity and just just obscure, like, obscenities. It's brilliant. I love this movie. And if you haven't checked it out, like I said, you will either love it or you're like, why the fuck do you even mention that movie? Let's move on now to the last video on this list, number 51. Coming in at number 51, we have the James Bond saga. A lot of people are going to think that this is a cop-out, that I'm putting an entire saga of films into one here. But just think about this. If I were to not do this, this entire top 100 list would just be full of singled-out trilogies and sagas. So I'm condensing this just so I can have a bigger variety of movies in here. Now, if you're curious, I'll tell you what my top James Bond movies are. Number one has to be Goldfinger. Following that, you have Golden Eye, and then actually, I think that Skyfall could possibly be my number three James Bond movie. I think Daniel Craig is killing it. Probably my favorite um, Bond, because I know somebody's going to ask who my favorite Bond is. Um, probably Scotland Forever. You got to go with Sir Sean Connery. After them, I actually do like Roger Moore and Timothy Dalton. Actually, you know what? There isn't a single bad James Bond. Maybe George Lazenby. I He was okay, but other than that, I think Pierce Brosnan, he had an amazing... Goldeneye was so great that I can forgive, like, World's Not Enough and those kind of movies. But um, I think Daniel Craig's doing a fantastic job. And with Spectre coming out next month, it's going to be another one that it will happily hang up on my wall of great movies. Thank you to everybody for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. Now let's roll to the very end. I really appreciate you all watching that video with me, and I hope you're enjoying my top 100 movies of all time so far. If you wouldn't mind, hit the subscribe button over there, and if you check up in the top right corner there, you'll see a little card. It'll take you over to our Game Geeks channel. If you're not subscribed to that channel, you should. A lot of great content over there. What we do over there, it's all about video games. We do Let's Plays, we do walkthroughs and guides for video games. Right now we're playing Bloodborne, Soma, and in just a few minutes I'm going to post the Let's Play of Episode 1 of Telltale Games' newest venture, Minecraft Story Mode, starring Patton Oswalt. It's going to be brilliant. I, I can already tell, because Telltale doesn't make bad games besides Jurassic Park, which we will not speak of. The last thing I'm going to mention, if you click right here, you'll be taken over to our Patreon campaign. Every single dollar that's donated into that campaign gets put directly back into the channel to make it better. Because we are all going to make the channel better together. I really appreciate you guys watching these videos that I put out. And I will catch you in the next one. Until then, Godspeed. We're, We're kind of funny, funny and, and this video, video is over. <laughs> 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 <laughs>